Good evening, everyone. This is my first time speaking at uh, St. Michael's, so it's, uh, it's an absolute yeah, pleasure, and thanks for coming out. Thanks for coming out. Do you know what? I'll just start by this. As I was sat there and I was just thinking about coming up, I had like a, a thing going in the, my, my mind thing. Here we go, God. Here we, here we go, God. Here we go, God. Here we, here we go, God. So can I just say this? Put a stake in the ground and say, here we go, God. Here we go, God. This is yours, Lord, tonight, and I give it all to you, Father. Um, do you know what I'm going to start as well just by saying, just a few, a few couple of years ago, I was sat in these seats, or not these seats, but the seats that were there on the floor, and um, I felt the Lord give me a picture, right? And the picture was me stood on this stage where I am tonight. And uh, I, I remember saying to the Lord, oh no, <laughs> no, 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 not me, not me, don't do this to me. And uh, there was like this sweet sound of, of the voice of the Lord come to me and he said, um, you, you mean everything to me. You mean everything to me. And do you know what? I just want to say, you guys here tonight and you at home, to the Lord, you, the Lord says this to you. You mean everything to him. And uh, in that moment, I said, all right, Lord, if you call me, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. But I said, I'm not going to do it in my own will. I'll, I'll let you take control of that. And I didn't go to Sai and say, oh, Sai, can I speak? I said, I handed it over and I've prayed about it since. And two months ago, I got the call, right, <laughs> to do this tonight. And here I am. So, uh, Praise God. I pray tonight that uh, this isn't my, me speaking. I pray the Lord's, uh, this is the Lord's timing uh, with this. And I pray that the, the word I, I bring tonight is, is from him truly. So the talk we're going to do tonight is really centered around the power of prayer. The power of prayer. Can I tell you, I have been blessed. My life has been transformed by the power of prayer. Um, there's probably a, there's a whole heap I could talk on on that. I'm not going to do it tonight. That's for a, a, another evening. But, uh, but this, this talk is about prayer with boldness, but at the heart of it is all around prayer. And I want to start this evening. We're going to look at Acts 4 in just a moment and go through the full verses. But I want to start this evening by doing a recap uh, of just the first four uh, books or, or the first chapters or, or, uh, of Acts so that we, we know where we stand. All right. And at the moment, my wife and I are watching um, This Is Us. I don't know anyone else watches that. Yeah, there's a few hands going up. It's a great series, and there's a recap at the moment. It's about a minute, and uh, I'm hoping to do that just so we all know where we are. So firstly, in Acts 1, we saw holy, the Holy Pentecost and the Holy Spirit descend. Um, Peter preached to the church, and the church grew in its numbers to 3,000. We saw an amazing acts of kindness with people giving and that really imploding into great things. We jump forward to Acts 3, the story of, at the temple gate of the crippled beggar, uh, when Peter and, uh, and John then go and heal uh, the crippled beggar at, their, uh, at the gate. Acts 4 says, while speaking, they were confronted by the priests and the captain at the temple guard and some of the Sadducees, and they arrested them and they put them in the jail until the next morning. So I just want to start by just grounding us by that, of where we are in this story. They've preached, they've healed this man, they've then been put uh, in the jail, and the following day is pretty much the trial. They go before the people, you know, filled by the Holy Spirit. Peter gives an amazing response uh, that only he could give, the Holy Spirit could give, and of course, they can't equip them. They adjourn the court, they bring them back, and ultimately what they say is that if they speak of Jesus again then ultimately uh, their, their fate will be sealed, right? Uh, that's, that's there. And amazingly, this is in the same place, right, as where Jesus stood those few months before, right, with Aeneas and Capias, the same people right in front of them, looking at them and about to try and equip them. Amazing. So John and Peter are let free. They're able to go. Which brings us on to the, the, the scripture that we're going to look at tonight. And I suppose just before I go into that scripture, I ask us all here this evening, and I just question, you know, what would we do in response to where we are right now? They've just been told that if they speak, uh, Peter, and, if they speak of Jesus again, then ultimately uh, they'll be acquitted. Well, let me tell you what they do. The church has a prayer meeting, right? There is power in prayer. And at the heart of this talk, there really is uh, the power of prayer. And there's nothing like prayer. In Matthew 18, uh, verse 20, it says, For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with you. 
I'm going to jump forward to the scripture now and go into the scripture uh, for this evening, which is, should come up on the screen here, Acts 4, uh, 24 uh, to 31. When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer of God. O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David and servant saying, why were the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The king of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. In fact, this has happened here in this very city. For Herod, Pontius Pilate, the governor, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were all united against Jesus, your holy servant, whom you anointed. But everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this place, prayer even, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. What a great prayer, right? What a great prayer. Just amazing to see uh, the tenacity of what they prayed as well. And what I want to do this evening, just bringing up the slides, is just highlight uh, a couple of points that came on those slides. The first thing it says, Sovereign Lord. And what I love about this is it starts, the prayer starts with Sovereign Lord. It's like they were putting him in his rightful place. You know, Sovereign Lord, they've just been in front of the highest court in the land. And they're saying, Sovereign Lord, they're just saying, Lord, you're above that. You're above that. And it goes on to say, just, just after that, you can see a uh, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in it. So putting Lord, the Lord in his rightful place. The second part I just want to highlight here on this uh, scripture is where it says, and now, O Lord, hear these threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. It says great boldness. They ask for great boldness. And I, and I wonder whether we would ask for that, right? We've just been told at the courtroom that if we speak of Jesus, then ultimately, you know, we're going to stand to trial. And we've seen what's happened with Jesus previously. You know, the, the tenacity that they're actually asking, or this prayer is, you know, give us great boldness to go out there and speak the word of Jesus. Just, just amazing, I think. Uh, that they would do this. Would we do this? Uh, you know, would we say, please, God, take these people, change these people, do anything but, but that probably. But uh, here they are asking for boldness to continue speaking uh, of the word of the Lord. The third part I want to highlight just here is that it says, after they prayed, the meeting place shook and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. What I love about this is that they prayed, the, the building shook, and then they were filled by the Holy Spirit. I think there's just an amazing sequence there of what, what actually happened. And ultimately what we see is I highlight the last part just here, the fourth part. They preached the word with great boldness. So they had amazing communication that they were able to go out and share the gospel. And it was like um, the prayer that they put, you know, they asked for was instantly received and instantly gratified, which is amazing. And they spoke with, with great boldness. There was a time in my life where I think prayer was at the center uh, of, uh, of, a, of a kind of experience I had. If we could bring up the slide, the, um, my dad, uh, as he was driving to work, crashed his car while having a heart attack. Um, it was, a, it was a really, really tough time. Amazingly, outside of the, the GP surgery where he crashed the car, there was GPs, and they ran out with the defibrillator. They sounded the alarm. They came out with the defibrillators. They defibrillated my dad and brought him round, but he was in a, a really critical position. The notes say that he was out for around three to five minutes at that moment in time. Um, 
Then what happened is an air helicopter came and they took my dad to the BRI and again the notes tell us that he went unconscious on, the, on, the, on that helicopter ride uh, to the BRI, which was, uh, which was something. I remember getting a phone call from my mum and saying, her saying, Peter, can you come to the BRI? We need your help. My dad, uh, your dad's not very well. And I rushed there, as you can imagine. And in doing that, when I, when I got this instantly, I thought, well, what can I do? And I pray, I text everyone on my phone. <laughs> I don't know if you've done a text to all. <laughs> and on my phone, I've got Christians, I've got non-Christians, I've got the lot. Uh, and I sent everyone on my phone, you know, pray for my dad, pray for my dad. I got to the uh, high dependency unit, and I don't know if anyone's had the misfortune of having to be in one of these places, but basically what they do is they send you to a, a side room, and then they bring in the consultant. And the consultant came in, and he said to us that your dad has 50% chance that your dad uh, would, would, would not survive. And there's 50% chance that your dad might survive, but there's a high probability that your dad uh, will never be the way you know him to be uh, right now. And I remember in that moment, I dropped to my knees and I said the most heartfelt prayer I've ever said in my life. I really called upon the Lord right there and uh, the consultant was there. I think he was a bit, oh. <laughs> and so was my family in the room. And after we prayed that prayer, I started walking the aisles of the corridor and I started singing, Our God reigns. Our God reigns forever, your kingdom reign. And I started prophesying that across the room. And, and do you know what? I liken this when I've looked at the scripture to the sovereign Lord part, right? It was like I was just saying, Lord, you're in control. I hand this to you. I hand this to you. It was all getting a bit much for me and my wife Tamsin, who many of you will know. And um, we said, right, we're going to leave. We're going to go out for a few minutes. And as we walked down uh, to near the, near the steps, we all know those by the BRI, right? There's a, there's a few shops that are there. And amazingly, throughout my prayer walk with the Lord was a picture of, I've been drawing in my journals of two swans swimming together. And I hope you can bring that picture up of just me uh, scribbling this. And you'll see it just there. So just the one before that, actually, if you may. These are the, this is some of the scribbling I was doing. And this was a reoccurring kind of picture. This is probably one of the best <laughs> drawings I did. Some of them were rubbish. Um, and subsequently, there, as I walked through, you've just seen it. But there was, in the window of one of the shops, was these two swans. The next one, which is the, uh, the swans, uh, the kind of teddies there. And you know what? I had a Holy Spirit moment. Right. I was overcome by the Spirit, and I, and I knew. I had this overwhelming sense. The Lord was with me, my, the Lord was with my dad, and the Lord was going to guide my dad through this. So I bought those swans. Uh, they, they sat next to my dad, and they become the evangelical swans, right? Because people kept asking us, what are these swans? What are they about? And we kept saying, you know, I kept telling the story about how I believed that, that the Lord had spoken to me. Amazing, amazing when God, you know, gives us a picture and then gives us something just to say, you know, I'm here with you, right? I'm here with you. In your hardest moment, in the deepest, hardest moment in my life, the Lord was right there with me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My dad today is alive, kicking and really well. And the picture that's going to come up on my screen is me and my dad with my little boy, Matthew, shortly, not too long after that. And when I asked my mum, I said, uh, Mum, what, what happened? You know, what does my dad, uh, you know, recognise or remember about that time? She says, well, he's got five days memory loss, but that's pretty normal for my dad, right? <laughs> it, it, that's pretty most weeks. He remembers two days out of five. Amazing what the Lord did for us uh, there and the healing hand that he put on. And one last thing. You know, I said about texting everyone on my phone, gathering people in prayer. People kind of, that went on lists. That went kind of out there. Amazing what people did for me in the different churches I've been with. But somebody texted me back, a doctor called Dr. Sai, I had him on my phone. And he said, was your dad named Richard? And I said, yes. He said, I was the doctor that defibrillated your dad. And I was praying instantly when I was there. He's a prayerful man, I know him well. Amazing what the Lord does, how he brings people together, right? And how prayerfully, when we ask for prayer, people gather and they come. Praise God for the healing hand over my dad and where he is today.
Why did I tell you that story? Because at the crux of that story tells us there is power in prayer, people. There is power when we join together. When the church congregates, we join together. We unite in things that we believe in and we truly passionately go after it. And I passionately prayed and I know many, many people passionately prayed with me. And we saw the Lord come in just a, a miraculous way and heal my father. It says in Luke eleven nineteen, famous, it's also in Matthew, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. In the scripture that we've just read, they asked, give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. And what were they given? They preached the word with great boldness. We knock. And the Lord comes and he delivers. He delivers for us. And we notice really at the final part of that scripture, it goes on to say how they were filled by the Holy Spirit and then they went out and spoke in great boldness. I think the Holy Spirit, well, we know it's through right the way through Acts. And I think it's really at the heart of this scripture. And I just want to say this. The Holy Spirit was not just for the believers at the beginning of the first century. The Holy Spirit was not just for the 120 in the upper room at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit was not just for those in the house of Cornelius in Acts 10. The Holy Spirit was not just for those 12 disciples in the 19th chapter of Acts. The Holy Spirit is for absolutely all of us and every single one of us here this evening. And I strongly believe and convicted and have prayed about this, uh, this night a lot over the last two months. And I sense that the Lord and the Holy Spirit is here right now. Amen. Mm -hmm.